Today it's finally arrived. This is Bantam West. This is probably one of the smallest boxes I have gotten on this channel <laughs> for a game. I tend to back these like ginormous games. So it's really nice to see something that's like really focused on uh, keeping the scope correct, having a big and dense game without all of the fluff. It looks like there's something else in here. What is else? Is, what is here? Okay, so let's see here. We got the settlers map here. We got it's like an invoice. <laughs> yes, we got an a, a return invoice, I believe, or a packing slip. And then we have a link here or a page here as well. Looks like it has a few links to some things and uh, just some more information. A few notes from the publisher. Please read these. There's a typo. And they canceled the card sleeves and refunded all who ordered them. So uh, that's the main thing there. All right. Let's go ahead. I'll read the rest of that, of course, later. But right now, we got to get into this and this. The easy thing. Bloop. Let's go to this. Do not open. See delivery instructions on reverse side. I found... If found, please return to the Speakeasy in the Capital District of Hemlock. There will be a gentleman in the side room reading yesterday's paper. Walk down the stairs behind him and knock on the cellar door below. To whoever answers the door, mention the words, there's blood on the trail. Uh, okay, I guess we'll, uh, we'll do that later. <laughs> All right, so I do have the uh, black sticker here. This is the Shadow Governor's Pledge. It's base game plus add-ons inside. So what they did here, this was kind of cool. I was talking to them about this a little bit. Um, essentially, they were able to fit everything like in the box, to save on shipping a ton. And I really appreciate a developer that's really looking out for the consumer side of things when it comes to that. To actually be able to like save a little bit is quite nice. They have great art, by the way, as you can see all the way around. I know there was a little bit of a reflection there. We'll take that this uh, this reflective part off. Let's go and do that now, I suppose, so we can actually read it. Okay. Carefully slide through here. I've actually never damaged a box this box this way, at least not to my knowledge. I suppose uh, there's a first time for everything, which probably like just happened or something. I don't know. Probably. If so, I've never noticed. Let me know if you open the box a different way. Maybe you like get the get the edge there you know like like right here and stuff maybe i don't know either way that's how i do it tends to work out pretty okay all right so we do have the uh like uh embossment here right the the uv light reflected on bantam west uh otherwise all matte linen finish on the box that looks good looks like uh uv on here as well the struggler ludo and then um looks like right here also uv and all this is the Kickstarter edition. Then they have the uh, Immersive Tabletop Simulator ITS. And then, of course, Bantam Planet, uh, where Bantam West takes place. Okay, so there's, again, some of that art I was talking about. It looks like they did UV on the logo everywhere, even the BW here. That's super cool to see. There you go. I can see that. Very nice. Very nice. They have the KS edition here, this time not embossed. Um, looks like this was the sticker they added. That's probably pretty smart. I know they often have to do this. And so I don't know when they found that out. But either way, you got to put a sticker on there, especially I know in Europe, you got to make sure to, uh, properly display. This is not like a little kid's toy or something like that. There's also a sticker over the UPC. So they must have changed something there. Kind of interesting. That being said, stickers work and actually it's pretty clean too. So that's nice. This is kind of a, a retail look at it, though, even though it has a case edition here where it shows the game off and has a little blurb and a little bit like that and an explanation of it. Now, this is kind of interesting. Um, I don't know how many people know about this ITS, the Immersive Tabletop Sim, and they mention it here and here. So I'm more okay with it. Often I feel like, you know, I backed the game. Like, why do I need to then be sold on it like this? That's what the difference between a retail box is. This is like on a shelf. Oh, what is this? You go and you read the back of it before you decide whether to buy it or not because you've never heard of it before. Not the case here. However, I do think it's good to actually do this, to actually, like, explain what the ITS system is in case somebody didn't quite catch that, even through the Kickstarter. All right, let's see how they did this. I'm kind of interested in this. And, again, another sticker here. Uh, okay, let's see. Well, that opened really nice, that's for sure. 
Box looks good, nice and sturdy here. No mold or anything. That looks immaculate. The glue job is actually really good all the way around. Slightly uneven here, but no big catchings or anything like that. Collect dust or whatever. It looks good. Okay, put that over there. Okay, this is a nice introduction. So, you know, people often say, I think that, you know, like it, 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 the game is what's important. And granted, however, my unboxing of this game, right? Any game that you spent a lot of money on and then you're going to unbox it, that's your first experience as a, a, a backer, as a consumer, right? So it's like, this is my first experience with the game. So if you get the unboxing right, often you're already on a good start. And I must say, you know, a big thing like this definitely looks pretty cool and it helps protect some of the stuff inside. Okay, so they have a little bit here. Oh, this is kind of fun. Look at this. They have a little old-timey newspaper thing. That's really sweet. I dig that. Don't know exactly how used this is, but uh, it only cost them two cents, so that's great. <laughs> that's cool. I dig that. Okay, then it looks like we have a, a technical manual consisting principally, principally of chapters covering advanced game mode setups and mechanics. Okay, so this is like part two of a rule book. Is that what's in here? List of advanced rules. So you got the Shadow Governor, Master of Chaos, Hunter's Expedition for the solo variant, Stranger's Duel for the two-player variant. So it looks like this is mostly um, some of the more advanced things that you can do. Uh, Governor's, a Shadow Governor standard mode, right? Very to-do lists and stuff like that. Interesting that they would separate them like this. I suppose that's okay. Uh, that way you can read one book and then just call it good um, and then read this afterwards. Kind of interesting. It looks like it's first edition. Okay, well, let's see here on the back of it. There is an indexed glossary. Okay, so this is interesting. This is this is kind of a, a talking point here. If you're if you if you have been to this channel a lot, you might even be able to skip this. I comment on this all the time. Though this is interesting when there's both. Sorry, I have a different point of stick today. So you can have an index, and you can have a glossary, and you can have a table of contents. So the table of contents is based off the headers, right? So it's it's in order of pages. It lists the one page where that header takes place, right? So list of advanced rules, right there. Shadow governors, right there. Very to-do lists, right there. So it breaks down where to find that thing. It can be kind of useful if you already know what you're looking for and you even know the section, but this is not alphabetized anywhere and it's not based on concept more than the just the actual headers, right? So then you can have a glossary. And what a glossary will do is it'll go through common terms and it help explain them in a very summarized way. As you can see here, there's maybe two sentences here uh, to something, but not really a whole lot more than that. Then there's an index, which is just a list of key terms. It could be everything from attacks to defense to, you know, first player or whatever it is, some status element, whatever it is, in alphabetical order so you can find it easily. And then it'll list every page that's listed, not just one. So, for instance, Acre is mentioned on page 6 and 12. Now, here you can see they advanced and the standard. It looks like the standard is right here. So, the, one thing that's good, if you are going to flip it into two different books at least mention which book it's in. That's helpful, right? That that That's kind of nice. And now I know if I read page 6 and 12 of the standard manual, I've read everything there is to know about Acre, whether it's in an example, whether it's a, a, a side rule that only involves acreage, it doesn't matter, I can find it here. An index is very useful. I have never once... Well, okay, no, I do want to clarify. I guess for some status elements in some games, right, that have a lot of different statuses... A glossary can come in handy for that, though typically I just want like a back of the uh, uh, thing where it just like lists it kind of that or almost a player aid. But more often than not, if I am wondering what a gold coin is worth or something like that, I, like I already know it. I've read the whole book. I'm the kind of guy that will read the entire book front to back everything. So I tend to only have questions about advanced stuff, in which case a glossary is so high level I don't use it. That being said, it also costs you nothing. If this is as long as your index is, it's not too bad. It does, you know, separate them a lot, right? So this could have been one page of an index instead of two pages of a glossary. I'll let you know in any review I do on, or, or even a first impression on if I use the glossary part of this index. Let me know in the comments below if you've used the glossary, if you find them useful, or if you tend to just skip the glossary anyway. If there is a glossary in an index, I'll always skip the glossary. Just go straight and I'll read the rule book itself, not some summarized thing. 
Just personal opinion there. As for separating it into, so like supply, notice it's in the standard three and seven and the advanced eight. I don't know exactly how I feel about separating these two. Um, I, I, I worry that if I only read this, I, I should have read this and now I'm gonna miss out if I don't, but we'll see, we'll see. Either way, it has an index, that's what matters, so I could find an alphabetical, or, oh, honors, okay, now that's advanced manual, page three, and I, I can then go to page three. Let's go ahead and do that live. I don't remember what I looked up. I can't even go to page three. That's why we don't do a live, right? All right, we go to page three. <laughs> All right, and then we have, what I say, honors? Yeah, honors, honors, right there, boom, there we go. Here's what I need to know about honors. Now see, like, this is so small, you would think that'd almost be the glossary, right? But as you can see, a little bit more information, and then sometimes there's a lot more, right? And so, it can be kind of helpful. It looks like this is actually done pretty well, though. It's got uh, icons and stuff like that, and what that's going there, it has that index. Um, it has a lot of, like, call-out boxes, and um, arrows and examples and stuff to show you different things. So that's really helpful, right? Here's what the lockpick kit looks like. I wonder if it has a component list. I, maybe the advanced one doesn't. It doesn't look like it does. Let's check the standard. The component list, what I look for there is a, oh, look, so right here, we do have an iconography kind of list on the back here. That's nice to see, very useful. Often you can just keep that on the table and look at it that way. I do appreciate that. Okay, we do have a component list, perfect. So what I like to see on the component list, image, number, name, right? So when you are talking about the predator cards. I don't know which one of these colors is a predator card. So assuming it's an order, right? Standard, gunman, wolfsbane, predator. These light orange ones, those are the predator ones. I should have nine of them as opposed to the darker kind of brownish orange ones, which are the legendary beasts, which I should also have nine of them. Very helpful to see and know, right? Because often I'll be reading in a rule book and maybe it'll be like, oh, take the predator uh, token. So I don't know what that is. I will flip back to the components and I can see exactly what it is. Name, number, image, perfect, love it, that's great. This symbol here, I don't know what this signifies, but kind of interesting to see that. Um, oh, oh, it says right here, the judge regulates all components marked with that. The banker regulates all components. Oh, okay, very cool, I dig it, interesting. Otherwise, this looks about the same as the other one. Oh, did it have an index? Event, okay, so it has a little uh, event reference sheet. And then, no, okay, so the index, okay, so I don't know how I feel about that. So I'm gonna want this here because obviously I'm using this and I'm using this. But now if I need to look something up, I can't still use this. I now have to grab this out of the box or on a side table or keep this on the table as well to go ahead and actually look through the index and see which one's which. It would have been nice to have the index in here as well. It would have just been two more pages because it's two pages, that's actually kind of nice anyway because um, it's, it, it's literally just an, an extra page here, right? That you do, you put some R on the other one or something like that. Um, because it would have been, because I'm gonna have this anyway. So everything else looks great. Like all that's nice. And again, I know that's super nitpicky. You guys know how I am with that. But um, you know, when it comes to the first few game sessions you have with the game, um, you want that as good as possible or you're not gonna get any future ones. And having to look up stuff and trade between stuff, not always the most fun. But overall, those are good. Now look at this, this is kind of fun. So this has like a, the terrain upgrade cabins right here, right? It's got like, all of these upgrades inside of this, which is super cool. That being said, I don't know if I'm gonna store it this way or not. That'll be the key. Like, do you then put this back in and store it just like this or do you store it differently? I don't know. So let's see, we have the terrain upgrade cabins, uh, 14 20 millimeter cabin miniatures. That'll be fun to look at. We have the metal coins right in here like that. We have just a list or a, 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 a grouping of Meeples, looks like we got some berry ones stuff. We'll take a look at uh, those, the log ones and stuff look good. They're all painted. We have a few clips. These are the hard style clips. I prefer the silicone ones, the rubber ones, the soft ones. I don't know exactly what material. Um, and I'll talk about that later. We have the uh, Marshall badge, an actual badge you can wear if that's what you wanna do. That's super fun, quite heavy though. Be careful what you put that on. We have some colored dice that are all like marbled. Those look fun. Looks like we do have some extra bags, probably to separate these once they actually open them because these are first time open things. Okay, we have a loose tray of minis. We'll take a look at those. We have a, a, a cute little row of gems. These are a dark blue. That's kind of interesting to see that color. 
Oh, we got a whole bunch of tiles and stuff like that. This is always nice when they group it like this because then it's it helps with the picking and packing a lot because then boom, done. Everybody gets all that. I know you have all that. I didn't accidentally not grab this or I didn't miss one here. It's all just grouped in there. That being said, sometimes this can be a little tight. It can warp them a little bit. This looks like that didn't happen at all. So we'll take a look at that. We got uh, two stacks of cards here. So we'll take a look at that, of course. And tokens. Now this is probably where a lot of these are going because there's no real token storage tray or anything like that in here. So we'll take a look at that as well. All right, so let's go ahead and move all of this out of the way and get started on all this. Start with the tokens. I'm gonna to open that up. Looks like they are numbered and organized, so that's good. First time creator devs um, have come a long way in the professionalism I feel that they have in a lot of their stuff. I remember back in the, the heyday of Kickstarter, well before just game found, oh there is some some movement there, so we'll see how that is when it comes to the, the picture. Anyway. Um, uh, you, uh, indie meant like there, there's some oddities, right? And, and I think there still will be here. Like it is kind of a bummer. There's no real tray to store all the cards or anything like that. So it's going to be kind of loose in there. This is difficult to open. My goodness. Um, but we'll see either way. They've come a long way and I do appreciate that. This wrap actually fairly thick, not the thickest I've had, but definitely not the thinnest. This is actually quite nice. Okay. So, oh, they're already just falling out. Look at that, look at that. Let's go ahead and take a look. Zoom in a little bit. All right, so as you can see, very good. There's like no tag, like anywhere on this. This is a, an amazing token. This is nice. Um, it also is very firm. Uh, there's not really a lot of squishiness at all to this. So that means the layers are already really compressed and glued well. So just as an FYI, there's gonna be a whole bunch of layers. And you can see some of the layer lines here, at least I can. Um, so they're, they're definitely there, but there's not a whole lot of give. Actually, very good. Now, one thing I was kind of concerned about is peels. Let's see how that looks here. So you play the game a whole bunch, you mess with these tokens a lot. It's your favorite game ever, and you've played it like a hundred million times. That's kind of how that's gonna look. Actually, pretty darn good. All right, so let's go ahead, put that back in. Uh, the, the fact that there's no, like, tag or anything like that fantastic let's open up one of these let's do the hat of course first player token right there again just falls out love that this is a little dark in my opinion um it's it's like dark on dark uh i can see this fine but I, as you can tell from the reflection i have a lot of lighting on here to film this i don't normally have all this lighting on when i'm playing the game so if it's over there like it, I, I i i can see it but it is a little dark. Um, so it would have been nice to have the contrast up there a little bit. But again, comes out great, comes out fine. Let's do this one's got a tray inside of the tray. So you can see right there, there is a little bit of a tag mark there. Do we get a little tag? Oh, we did a little tiny tag right there. You can kind of see it just a little bit. Push that out. This is, yeah, this looks great. Very nice, very nice. All right. I would say this is a easy pass. They've done really good work on this. Um, let's see, not really a whole lot of like interest. Oh, did this do two? I just did two at the same time. Okay, <laughs> it's that easy, guys. No, this is good. I, I like it. I was worried when I was first opening it that I, I saw this little peel there, and I was worried that it was going to do that, but. Maybe on the edges here, but on the tokens themselves, uh, I'm not really getting that at all. Sometimes you'll you'll actually feel that tear away, so the game will look really abused after a few plays. Nope, this is good. All all pass. Good job on that. Zoom out a little bit. Take a look at all these. Oh, oh that's scary, huh? <laughs> there we go. There we go. Oh, looks like it started to break right there. My daughter is just off camera helping me with the trash. Can you say hi, Adeline? Hi. <laughs> All right, so she's waiting for this. Oh, there's a whole lot here. All right, there you are. Thank you, assistant. Okay. So these are definitely skinnier than I anticipated. We'll do the cards afterwards, I think, because I'm kind of interested in these. Look how skinny these are. I was not expecting that. Like, that's, that's actually... 
pretty flat. And I think that makes sense because you're going to have them right there on the board and you flip them over to be able to like see again. It's a uh, uh, day versus night. And I imagine they all kind of have a day versus night uh, version of them. Same art, like nothing. Oh, no, 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 because here uh, there are some different. Uh, there's an unknown here. Oh, yeah, see here, it's a weapon rack, and then it goes from that to a lock pit kick and stuff like that. So, depending on when you go, depends on what you see. So, that's kind of cool. These turned out fine. I mean, none of these seem to be too bent, right? So, that would show any bending of it. Essentially, if they're curved both that way, if you flip one over, it's now curved this way and that way, and you would see a big gap here. I don't really see that um, too much at all. For wear and tear... Again, this looks like it's going to hold fairly well. On the back, maybe some, you know what? I mean, it still looks fine. You'll see it eventually, especially with how dark some of this is, but oh, that's going to show up great. I think that's cool. All right, so we got that. But again, where I'm going to put this in the box, I don't I don't know. I guess it's loose somewhere. We have some bigger ones here. You can do day versus night. It would have been kind of cool to change the art perhaps a little bit, but it would have cost more too. Then you have the Miss B's Haven. Right, and you have the day and night on there. And again, even these long ones, I'm not really seeing too much of a curve or anything. Yeah, looks good. Okay, looks like this is the last one, a big one here. This is the uh, the main one by the looks of it. So you have this here, you have the little calendar where you're going through everything. I recall, it's been a while, it's been a, been a while. Glad to see this happen. Okay, dual layer boards. Again, for a first time dev, this is awesome. I love seeing this. These look really nice. Very thick, actually. If you see, there's actually um, two layers, like full layers, glued together from what looks to be really good. Now, sometimes they don't align too well. And I do see a little bit of offset. Not a whole lot. And again, it's very hard to get this perfect. Uh, harder than you would think. Um, but you can see right here, like, if you look at, like, I don't well, here, let me zoom in a little bit. I'll, I'll show you specifically what I'm looking at here. And again, this looks great. Don't I mean, this is me being nitpicky. Right. Like, right, let's take this two for example. As you can see, there's definitely more space in the bottom right corner than the top left corner, right? So it's like it needs to be slightly moved to the left, right? This top layer, or the bottom layer needs to be slightly to the right. It's just ever so you can see there's a little bit of a gap right there, and then there's no gap right there. So very, very close. And you can see the same here, right? More space here than here. Um, for stuff like the numbers, it's actually less easy to see, but you can kind of see it just slightly to the left. You would be amazed how few dual layer boards I see that are truly fully centered. I don't know what it is about it, but it must be difficult or it would be done, obviously. It, this is good. Like, this is not too bad. I've seen them be way more off, but it is a little slightly off. And I don't know if each one's like that. Let's take a look. No, see, this one's the opposite. This one is more on the left. Or more, it's more pushed to the right than the left. So there's all this gap, and then it's there, right? So it again still looks great, but just something I noticed. Another thing I see, I'll say zoomed in for a little bit, is again how dark this is. Um, I, I know the uh, the guys over at, at a Bantam Planet. They uh, there's they're some young guys, and uh, I'm gonna pretend I'm still young, but I know a lot of you guys may not see the best. And I ain't judging about age or anything like that, but even just our game rooms often don't have good lighting. Normally it's like one light in the middle and then there's all this like shelf space taken out uh, so the walls aren't reflecting light or anything. Either way, it's typically kind of dim in there. And so to see these dark one, two, three, the dark brown on dark brown can be a little difficult to see. So it'd be nice to do that. This text here and all this stuff looks great. Like all that I think uh, shows up really well. I love the the like match here and stuff like this and the and the lighter here and whatnot. This reads really well. I all of these icons look great. I can see those just fine. Uh, again, I can see the one, two, three, four more than this one, two, three, four, because this is a little bit less contrasty. I can still read them just fine, at least for me personally. But ideally it works for everybody all the time as much as possible. So from an accessibility standpoint, let's up that contrast next time. Make sure people can can see it. That being said, that's just one color. So if you go here, I'll tell you what, this uh, yellow obviously stands out more from the blue than the kind of reddish brown. Um, it's still, you know, the same kind of contrast thing, but otherwise I do like these colors. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit now that we're kind of looking at the whole thing here. One thing that's kind of cool that I like 
is that they're themed different. So this one, as you can see, has like the matches, and then this one has like the lock picks. And as you can see, it's it's meant for the specific character, so it's really thematic in what you're doing here. Same with here with the guns, right? That's super cool. It looks like all of these stay the same, but uh, the 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 art kind of really matches. Now it is again kind of interesting that this isn't dual layer as well. That the character just kind of sits there, I guess. I, I don't know if that's covered up or not. Actually, uh, maybe it's not. But if it, it looks like it would fit a card here, so that'd be kind of loose on there. Kinda interesting. But those look great. I like them. All right. Last thing we have here is the map, and as you can see, there's quite a bit. Um, I'm front and back, a day and night version. Playing at night is harder. It's my understanding, a little bit more of an advanced way to do it. Um, it looks like here we have like downpour, so it can rain or whatever. We have all the different things you can have. This is quite thick. This is a really thick board uh, for what this is. Like that's that's actually very thick. They're not normally that thick. Um, and same kind of quality, maybe a little bit mushier, perhaps. Uh, that could just be in reference to the size. But either way, with how big these are, these are quite flat. And I'm not really seeing anything that's like telling me that this is really, yeah, see, not really curved at all. So far, this is great. Now, sometimes I leave this sit out and then it starts curving or, you know, or after you take it out. But uh, often that's pretty darn uh, static there. Uh, I will say, I think this kind of dark, Reddish brown doesn't stand out the best on this. Neither does, of course, the green circle on the green uh, <laughs> grass. Um, and it's kind of interesting. It looks like they moved this to red and then to green. Either way, that's a little hard to see. Again, not too bad, but the contrast could be up a little bit, I think. I'm sure they could play around with that, put a little highlight around it or something. Looks cool. I dig it. Again, lot, lots to do. Lots to look at. Um, very fun. Okay. There's the map. Do a quick look at these, really just because I'm curious about the color. Normally I skip these because you guys have seen a million of these, but I've not seen one this color before. So I'm kind of curious what that looks like. Uh, most gamers have so many of these in various uh, places. This is not even funny. Uh, it is a single use bag, right? So obviously I'm not going to put it back in there again. Zoom in a little bit for this. Okay, so uh, the reflection obviously works really well. It is quite dark. That's kind of interesting to see that. Uh, normally they're a little bit lighter than that. This is this is pretty dark. Um, the edges really do show that blue though, so that's kind of cool. You can definitely see that. But for the most part, they look pretty darn dark, uh, which I'm assuming is on purpose, right? You can make this whatever color you want. I'm not really even seeing too many like tag poles or anything like that. Not tag poles, but essentially this is a, a plastic injection like anything else. And so there'll be a runner that goes up to it, and then they have to break it off that, right? And often you'll see that mark, but it's not really noticeable here. It looks like it probably would have been right there, perhaps. So that's kind of interesting to see that uh, it doesn't really have that that mark that a lot of times you get. It looks like perhaps right there on this one. Yeah, these look cool. Okay, um, before we move on, let's... let's no, if I just did that, let's go and do dice. So we're going to do the plastic here. Minis will be last. You guys know how it is. Sometimes I get really obsessed with those things, so best to do them at the end. Let's look at these dice. Okay, so I already have a few opinions on this. First of all, I love that they are mostly square. A lot of companies like to do the like Chiswick style dices where their dices die, dice, where they're very curved on the sides, so they roll a lot more, right? Because it's fun to have them roll, you know, like like crazy, right? And that is fun. However, first of all, often they do end up going off the table. You guys know how that is. Um, but additionally, it's not nearly as accurately random as it could be. If you go to a casino, one thing you'll never see are dice like that where they're curved. In fact, you'll see the crispest of edges on there because once you actually make it a perfect square as opposed to this rounding process that is inaccurate and not even across all faces, you get more accurately random thing where each side has its own um, you know, uh, the chance of showing up. And that also means that most of the rolling is done in here and not so much on the table. On here, you'll you'll tend to see them do this more than a lot of rolling. So it can be fun to roll the other ones, but technically, if you're wanting an actual solid dice mechanic, the harder edged ones are better. So just uh, that being said, um, you know, they've already added marbling and stuff like that to it. And every, every little bit you do that's different, 
changes the weight distribution ever so slightly. So it's not like it's going to be accurate anyway. No board game that I know of has had truly accurate dice, like casino-worthy dice, but that's fine. That's okay. Contrast-wise, all of the white shows up really good on all of these, even the yellow one. Sometimes that's not always the case, but I think this shows up well. They're painted really well. I dig that. I mean, if, if a game manufacturer can't make a uh, pip dice like this, then I, I don't know what to tell them. Uh, the contrast in the swirl looks pretty good. Uh, this might have the least amount when it comes to visual like differences, uh, at least to me personally. They look fairly close compared to that, but all they yeah these look cool i like it i like that they're a little marbled it makes them kind of feel a little bit more special even though they're just pip dice and the colors look good now uh, obviously you got you got you got two here though the same right but otherwise they're all different very cool i dig it ah, i got a two that's crappy all right so moving on from that we have cards let's take a look at some cards uh big ones first Whoop. throwing knives around watch out oh so this has an easy open See how easy it is. Is it king of average easy? It is. Good. Pass the test. I sometimes struggle with those too. <laughs> oh, maybe. Maybe. Oh, oh. Got it. Gonna open the other one while we're here. Ugh. There we go. See, here's the character card right there. And it shows a little symbol that they would have as well. But we'll look at that in a moment. This one didn't rip all the way. But it gets it started. Perfect. There we go. All right. Take a look at this big one. So this is like events and stuff like that that you can have, right? So you can see all the different ones here. There's a ton here. That's nice to see. A ton. Wow. Okay. Whole bunch. So there it is. All the different events and whatnot that you can have. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. So it does have some instructions right there. Do appreciate that. It's kind of nice. It's all thematic and themed well. I dig that. And even then, it has a little picture, right, to accompany everything, which I really appreciate. Uh, just to just to kind of set the mood a little bit and really fit the theme, I think, quite well. It then has a little blurb that you get to read, and then actually like decisions or uh, things you can do or things that happen that you you're kind of forced to do. So, yeah, that looks great. That's cool. And there's quite a bit here. I like that. Uh, you need you need the variety. It looks like there's quite a bit. Okay. Then we have some more special ones. These are Hunter Expeditions, Stranger Duel, Master of Chaos, Shadow Governor, and Warm Welcome. So this is the different ones you can do. So you'd start with the Warm Welcome here. And then, of course, you can do the extra ones as well. And they have different uh, kind of setups and stuff like that by the looks of it. Looks like then here... We have some player aids. You get four of them. They are front and back. Uh, fairly small text. So, uh, again, just be ready for that. You're going to have to pick it up to look at it, probably. Um, but all the icons and stuff are there, I suppose. Uh, there's no icon list here. So you'd need to reference the back of that, uh, that standard rule book. Um, yeah, but overall, uh, kind of helps you explain that. So, again, I'll, I'll let you know in a, any first impressions or anything how helpful that is. Okay, and then intro to-do list. Buy a horse, build a cabin, purchase a weapon, master an endeavor, right? And then you have uh, the different stuff here of the different characters that you can do. Get a kill, buy a drink, pass a store interaction, and use a cabin perk. So you can mark who's done those. Very cool. Those are the big cards. Little cards. Here are the characters. So you can see again the different symbols on each of these. So that's cool. Love seeing that. And then on the back you have a little bit about him. Oh my gosh, so she, she's wanted and um, he's a former street fighter and um, this person's uh, part of something. Same with this. So that's cool to see. I dig that. I dig that. And again, you would put this... Um, like this here. Let me get the, the correct one here. Come on, Jericho. Like that. So, again, it would have been nice to maybe have that a little indented as well, but that is alright. Moving on from that, we have, like, inside of cabins and stuff like that, and you can do different things here. So here is, like, fire tokens you can have, a burn cabin, Versus, a, you know, abandoned or whatever that is. So 
These are cabin blueprints. And then these are other cabins that were abandoned that can happen. And again, different people can do different things to your cabin as you set that up. Okay. And then we have different stuff here to do, right? So we have a pacifist, fugitive, vagabond, city slicker, frontiersman, collector. That's kind of fun, a little to-do list. It says right on it. So you probably put it on the right-hand side, I suppose. Wealthy, oh, and then left, bloodthirsty, benevolent. So you have different uh, tasks that essentially you're trying to do, right, that you get to do here. That's cool to see. And here, let's see if you have cargo that you can uh, hold. Now we have horses. We have Nemesis, uh, Willamina, Oxala, Agamemnon, Agamemnon, I can never say that one, Morrow, Rebel, and Scout. So you have different different horses, different mounts you can have. Let's say they're $5 for a horse, hot dog. <laughs> Then we have burn them down. All right. So set fire to the frontier and watch it burn. My goodness. Why would you do that? Bank notes. Lurking in the shadows. Uh, black market relics. A little codes. Get a kill, whittle away, test your might against the other newcomers in town. All sorts of different things you can do, as you can see. So that's cool. All right. So that's everything there. Now we, I think, just have a few more cards here. We're going to leaf through these real quick. And then we just have some fun stuff to look at. Minis and uh, metal tokens and, you know, the painted meeples and whatnot. So we'll do these cards and we'll do the probably the painted meeples. Okay, there's one. And still got my helper here, so that's good. Normally I leave a huge mess all around me when I film. Oh, that's a tiny piece. <laughs> These are not as easy open. Now, what, what, like, why some are easy open, some aren't? I don't know. I've never understood that. It's a lot of games. They don't do it on everything. There we go. Okay. So it looks like here we have different weapons and stuff we can look at. Brush axe. Rip and tear. Slash. Oh, these are predator things that can happen. Tackle. We've got herbalist. Slayer. Merchant's Escort, at Adjudicator, that's a fun word. I feel like I'm in a John Wick universe at that point. Wolf's Bane, some more stuff here. And again, you can see there's a hunting and stuff like that. So a ton of different stuff. There's a cat. Gotta watch out for the cat. Or is that a, is that a weapon? Uh, battle Cats? Heck yeah. Let's have some Battle Cats. A Molotov Cocktail. A Rusty Bucket. That's important. Again, more different... Uh, Things, es es excavator and a carpenter on this one. A lot of different uh, weapons and whatnot. So again, a huge variety of different things you can have. You can set up. This is why they talk about it being like almost a simulator, right? It's just so different than a lot of other games when it comes to this. There's there's a ton of different things you can do. You can go logging or you're foraging or mining. Really cool to see. All right, there's that. No Gatling gun, that's too bad. Oh, well. <laughs> It's not on that one. There's more here. Oh, yeah. More guns. Uh-oh. Yeah, your horse, Rebel, can buck. That's cool to see. Uh, Jericho can brawl, right? So you have different things that you can do, depending on who you are. TNT, that's a fun one. Disciplined aggression. <laughs> Love it. Levi Mercer's got a quick draw. Torch, a canvas mask. That's fun. A whole lot of different stuff you can do. Torch Rough Rider kit. Another torch. Uh, knuckle dusters. <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. Oathbreaker and Witness. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. There's all the items and stuff you can have. Uh, let's, yeah, let's look at some of these. A whole lot of different ones. We're going to have to look at all of them. Some of them are just like this. They're just like houses and stuff. Again, there's uh, minis to replace these, so I'm not too concerned about them. But you can see them right here. They're like Monopoly pieces, kind of, but made out of wood. Which wood, I think, fits very well into this game. And it looks like you have some kind of uh, token here. We're going to move that aside. Let's take a look at the token. 
I think this is probably stone or something like that that you have. Little ingots there. As you can see, they are a little trapezoidal. Good painting on them. I dig that. And we have little wood logs. Those are fun. Those are painted pretty good. They got like a whole... But painted, I think it's an ink thing. I don't know exactly how they do this. Obviously, it's painted brown. But I, I think this is a like a, a silk screen on it to get like the, the grain of everything there. That's what that is. And we have some herbalist kind of stuff. You can look at that. See the different plants. That's cool. I dig that. And I don't know what I in there. You can actually get the hide of an animal. Again, pretty fun to do. I like that. Yeah, those those, those are cool. Those are neat ones. All right. Moving on from that, let's go and take a look at... Yeah, we'll do the expansion afterwards. Let's go in and do these minis. And then we'll do the extras. So here's a little clip there. This is a locked lid. I appreciate that. That's nice to see. Oh, it is taped. Oh no. Oh, I hate the tape. That's why you got the lock lid. But it is also like really loose in there. So I can understand why they decided to do that. At least it was only two. All right. Oh, these washed. Oh, very nice. Okay. So here is the mini. Uh, okay. Yeah, this looks actually really nice. So you can see here all the detail. The gun looks good. That's very important for a game like this, I feel. And sometimes the guns can get kind of plain looking. It's got another one here that's a holstered. And I'm assuming he has this one out, but maybe not. Maybe this is a whole separate one entirely. He's got three of them. Uh, his hat brim looks good. Sometimes those can be a little thick, but that looks good here. Facial features look good. He's got even ears and stuff like that. So all that's there. All the uh, detail there is good. Now his hand here looks a little funny, but not too bad. And uh, I definitely appreciate the, the pose and the fact that it's multi-piece, so it's actually blocked here. Otherwise, I think this looks pretty darn good. Um, perhaps a little unclean here. So often what they'll do is they'll wash it and they'll wipe it down real quick. But as you can see, there's little kind of splotches that are kind of left here. But other than that, I think the wash looks good. It is a, a 3D, uh, like a textured base. So that's cool to see as well. We'll see if they're all different or not. Uh, yeah, no, this looks good. Again, this whole separate piece here is different. And then the arms were there too. And simply, I think it looks really good. Now, for the clips here, the thing I was commenting on that is, this will go on and literally like snap in, right? And then you have to kind of really force them. And as you can see now, I'm bending the mini trying to get this off. So it can get really hard to get that off because they have these really rigid uh, indents here to hold it. And additionally, what that'll do is that'll scrape away any wash, any paint, anything like that that you have on the rim. It'll kind of show that uh, wear and tear a lot more. So I appreciate the, the softer ones that I can just place in there and call good. You don't necessarily need that. I mean, there's not that many characters, but it does help to kind of distinguish between them. Otherwise, the tray itself looks good. It's black. It does have those locking lids, and it does have an indentation to keep it from really moving around at all. It really grips it. Very nicely, actually. This is like this. Is, often they'll just put a little dimple in there, but this looks good. Take a quick look at the other minis. Okay, uh, so the blade on the axe a little thick, but not too bad. Uh, the hair looks good, especially the braids. I think that looks good. Again, the rim of the hat looks great. They did a good job on that, really making the uh, rim seem fairly proportional. You know, not not too thick or anything like that. Satchel looks good. Uh, the jeans look good. You can see pockets and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, hands look good. Yeah, overall, again, very good. And as you can see, a different base this time. And so this is, again, all molded and sculpted just for her. Looks good. We got this one here. I love that they're all in different poses. Uh, this is actually kind of fun. It's like holding is like a, I don't know what you call that. It's not a belt. I don't know exactly what that is, but he's holding it there. He's got his, like, cigar out here. Again, the hat looks good. Facial features look good. Again, got the ears, the hair. All that's nice and uh, crisp. The uh, little small details on his vest and stuff look great. Yeah, this is cool. It actually almost looks like he's like, like his feet have sunk into the the 3D like textured sand a little bit. Like it, it looks like a little bit of an indent there, which actually I think looks pretty cool. 
I dig that one. Okay, and then finally we have this one. Um, again, using the terrain to their advantage. I appreciate that. It looks like this might be going a little into her leg. Um, kind of hard to tell, but it almost looks like that. So with a 3D sculpt, obviously, you're not bound by physical limitations. So you could fuse these two a little bit too far where it goes into the leg. It almost looks like that. Um, I, it, it, it's real close, but I would have liked to maybe make sure that's defined really good and that isn't going into her leg. Uh, gun looks great. Love that it's splayed out here. It's actually staying pretty straight. The gap between the arms is good. Uh, I can see it was assembled here and here. This one's probably the biggest gap I've seen. Um, but still, I think the assembly overall is quite nice. Um, hair looks good. The, like, bandana things she's got going on there looks cool. Her hat looks great. Uh, again, I do appreciate this. I notice there's no ring on the outside of the tree. It's kind of a solid bit there. So I would have liked to see some texture there. But otherwise, I think the texture looks pretty good. Yeah, that's a fun one. We got one more here. Square base here, Ronum, R Ronum, I think I'm saying it right. The dog is obviously the highlight. Let's look at the dog first. I mean, and he, that's obviously the best part of this mini. Hanging off the base, I really appreciate that. I think that looks great. Um, sculpted quite well. Uh, the face is a little bit hard to, to really make out. Looks like it may get a little soft there, but I just don't think they put a lot of wash there either. So maybe that's it. The lines on his vest uh, look great. Or I guess it's this whole shirt. They look really good. I really like those lines and that wash really draws them out in a very cool way. Uh, the mortar and pestle thing he's got here look great. He's barefoot. That's interesting to see. Uh, obviously the horn mask is cool. Uh, definitely a lot of wash on the front, not a lot on the back. Would have been nice to see some more wash there. Uh, just so it was a little bit more consistent, I feel. But, uh, yeah, he looks cool. Definitely cool. And he's got a dog. That, that, that's the highlight, really. Okay. Let's take a look at this. Zoom out a little bit. All right, this is the Marshall badge, first player token upgrade. And it does look fun. It's got a little bit there. Again, in case you were to buy this retail, but obviously we didn't do that. Oh, a little, little tiny opening for the back here. Here we go. Wow, this is actually like pretty legit. So as you can see here, there's a little pin where you can actually pin it to your shirt if that is what you choose. Or maybe you have a little vest or something like that. Um, it is kind of interesting where this was placed. So you would hold it like this. So it goes like up and down as opposed to sideways. I think that's on purpose because of how heavy it is so that it, it, it holds more without falling down. I don't know though, you let me know. Normally when you have pins, they're sideways orientation wise. So this is up and down. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Obviously it looks really cool. It is quite heavy actually. Um, I think all the details came out really cool. Uh, Ronum here looks great with the symbol and everything. Very cool. That's a, that's a neat one. I do that. A little sharp there. You got to be careful with that. And then we have coins. Everybody loves coins. That's always the best part. Now these are individually wrapped, it looks like. That's cool to see. Ah, oh, these, these are going to look awesome. I can tell you already. And again, these would replace these right here, right? The, 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 the coin tokens, I mean. Uh, the fives would replace those specific ones. Okay. No, we do have resealable bags for that, so that's kind of nice. Obviously, they sound... Like a lot of fun. Zoom in a little bit on these. You can see the detail. All right. So obviously face value. This is actually quite high on it. You, know, you can really feel that, especially the head of the snake here is uh, a highlight there. The $1 came out great. This came out really good. Uh, a little bit less vis uh, legible than the $1, I think. The ridge here looks great. And there's not much of a seam here. So this is actually still a mold, right? And so it'll be top and bottom. And often there is still a little bit of a seam down the middle. Uh, this is not noticeable. Like you don't really feel it too much. And it's very much not as visible as some of the other ones I've seen. So that's really good. 
on the uh, other side here, we have the one here, and then dollar, and then 27 GAH. Looks great. Check a few marks to see, especially that, that side, to see if I see any that have a really visible line. Looks like this one maybe slightly more, but overall, these are actually really good. And we have the fives, and these are just, these are just pretty. Again, sound great. Um, definitely heavier. Like, like you, you can feel the difference. Neither of them are, are super heavy. None of these ever really are. Um, so it's the type of metal to use and stuff like that. But the $5 looks great. The Very visible, right? I think both of them are quite well on that. And they seem to be fairly evenly brushed. It looks like this one. Uh, they're all like this, but it does get a little dark here on this side uh, with the wash kind of pooling in there. I think maybe because of the ridge, although I'm not sure. The Eagle looks great. The $5 here looks good. And it says uh, Struggler Valen, Valen um, which just makes me think about one five here, but that's all right. Either way, looks great. Um, again, the sides of these are some of the best I've actually seen from all the metal coins I get. Often there is a, a fairly noticeable ridge, but these look and feel great. These are nice. Very cool. All right, so that now just leaves these. So let's take a look at the terrain upgrade cabins. These are gonna be fun. You know, the cabins are such a big gameplay part of this game when it comes to, you know, um, just all the different things you can do to interact with them or other players, that it's uh, it'd be nice to upgrade those, I think. This is probably one of the better ones. So of course, upgrading money, always a highlight too, right? Everybody likes getting money, especially in games. Ugh. It's a little bit of a, that was a, a tight, Tight wrap there. All right, so it's it's in a box I hate. All right, I hate these kind of tight boxes because the moment I open this, I've now dented this and ruined the box. I much prefer, once I can actually just open up. <sighs> Here it goes. Not too bad. Just a little bit of a bend there. Of course, uh, over time, that'll turn out to be terrible. Now, even within this box, they still put tape on it. That's unnecessary, obviously. It just makes me have to use tape and then the tape's always gonna be there or I try to take it off and it's all sticky. But here we go. Okay, so this is already a lot of fun. I can tell. All right, let's go and take this out. Our hollow makes sense. We're gonna zoom in a little bit now. Okay. Detail on these are actually quite nice. The windows here look good. The different textures up here versus down here look good. Uh, the little tabard looks like a lot of fun. Of course, you have like a little outside door there and the main door there, and then the kind of Topping the top part of it, the cap of it looks really good as well. Those are cool. I dig that. A good thickness too. That's nice. Uh, good shape to them. So sit flat. Different style one here is more of a like a hut style kind of thing. Um, again, it looks very different. You have a little cactus there. I appreciate that. And here are the little windows set there. More cactuses. More windows. Again, you can have the little tabard there. The little chimney stack. And you have, of course, the front door. Um, and no back door that I see on this one. Uh, there is obviously the mold line right here. That's a little bit more noticeable than the last one. Still though, not too bad at all. Like really, it's it's not. I think it's a little bit more visual now than it, it's it's felt or anything like that. It feels actually fairly smooth. But if you painted that, it looked really good. Okay, then we have this style, which is fun. Kind of the, the half triangle one here. So again, you would enter through there. There's a door, there's a tabard. You got the... The chimney stack here, the wood, all the wood has like a, a texture to it, which looks kind of nice. Uh, a little, I don't know what this is there, a little netting or something like that. Windows on both stories, got the little chimney stack there. Got the clear line where the roof is. Got the overhang, the awning there. Again, really good thickness. Yeah, that's fun. That's cool. I like those. We have a few. And by a few, I mean two of these. These are more full style ones. Again, you got some stuff like uh, sandbags and stuff like that on the back. So that's actually really fun to see. You have these little, um, uh, I don't know, the, the, they're kind of decorative nowadays, but I don't know what they're actually called. It's a little wooden blocks underneath there. Again, Tabard, you got the door. You even have like a little, little awning with maybe some flowers or something like there. Again, you got some like wood on the side there. These are cool. I like all the details that they put into them. That's really neat. Like 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 the wood laid on the side and stuff like that. It's a little bit more realistic. And then for the final one, we have 
this one right here. So again, this is probably this is like a log cabin, right? So you can see the ends of the logs and the sides of the logs like that. Um, I will say that these side ones protrude out a lot more than these front ones. So they're not evenly protruding. Um, really like the big ones here on the sides here. Uh, the roof looks great. Um, and I can love the rounded logs like that. That'll paint up beautifully. You got the door, got the tabard, the windows, which are nice and framed here. Uh, a little chimney in the middle. And then uh, just plain logs on the side. Very fun. Those are cool. I like those. Well, you know, that is it, guys. That is Bantam West. Again, I'll let you know my thoughts on it when I get it to the table, whenever that is. So stay tuned for that, of course. If you have any opinions or thoughts, I'd love to hear them down below, of course, in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon. Bye, guys.